I'm Pete Zielinski with additivemanufacturing.media, and we're doing a series of videos on the role of software in additive manufacturing. In powder bed fusion, the profile of the powder bed at any particular layer potentially tells you a lot about the part you'll obtain at the end of the build. I'm talking about this with Zach Murphy of Velo 3D. So the company has incorporated height mapper capability into its Assure software for quality assurance in production metal 3D printing. Um, so Zach, let's say the powder bed in a given layer isn't flat, but it has a wave in it. Can you talk about that? Why would something like that affect the, the, the outcome, the quality of the final part? Yeah, sure. Um, so if you think about what's going on in the process, you're essentially laying down a very thin layer of powder and then trying to weld that powder to whatever is below it. Um, and so there are several critical parameters that are necessary to kind of get the best quality part at the end of the day. Um, a lot of times people focus on the lasers and the performance of the lasers or, you know, if it's, if it's an electron beam, um, the energy source. But really one of the other critical ones is how thick your powder is and how evenly it's spread across that surface. So if it's too thin, you can end up applying too much energy at that particular location, which can cause things like keyhole porosity or vaporization or, or other issues. And then if it's too thick, you can end up not fully melting through that layer. Uh, so you can get lack of fusion porosity. Um, and all of these things lead to poor part quality at the end of the day. You suffer in kind of the mechanical properties of the part. Um, it can also affect the surface roughness. So a lot of times the contouring capabilities or the ability to get a smooth sur a smooth skin surface uh, is really dependent on uh, the local powder thickness and how well it's spread and then how that interacts with the laser also. So a lack of consistency in the flatness of a layer of powder, a typical reason for that might be some defect in the recoder blade, but Velo 3D has a non-contact recoder. So if you're seeing a fluctuation like that in the profile in your machine, what would that mean for you? Yeah, so we, we don't see it very often because like you said, um, we don't have kind of the same kind of blade mechanism. Uh, and, and often if you have like a nick in the blade, you end up with a streak in the powder bed. Um, we have seen it like in early development. One of the reasons we saw it is that there were uh, pressure changes that would happen when valves would open and close. And some of those would cause uh, a momentary streak in the powder bed. Um, and so in that development mode, our height mapping system was extremely useful to be able to sense those um, and to correct, actually correct them as uh, basically do another recoat and correct that so that you ended up with a, a good quality powder bed at the end of the day. Um, and even before we had the automatic correction, there were a couple of instances where we actually were testing mechanical properties of parts and found that parts that were all in a line for some reason had uh, much different mechanical properties. And we were able to go back and look at that data and kind of root cause some of those differences, some of that variability to changes in power, powder layer thickness. Your software Assure, um, it's, it's quality assurance software. It doesn't let you control the build, but it lets you learn a lot about the build. Is that fair? Yeah, Assure is uh, kind of a, a window into all of the data that's generated uh, whenever you're calibrating the machine um, over the course of several runs or within a specific run so that you can look at, at for example, the height mapping data on every layer throughout an entire build to get an idea of how uh, the parts are behaving, how the powder bed quality is, is evolving, um, and making sure that everything is kind of running nominally. Okay, so let's let's go to that software now. So, so Zach, first, can we see one layer of the bed profile so you can tell us what that reveals? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so this build that we're seeing here is actually a, a mechanical properties build. So this is a bunch of tensile bars. Uh, this is probably not the most exciting build. You can see a little bit of the part layout here. Um, and if I go to uh, our live view of what's going on in this build presently, I'm going to scroll over here to, let's say we're on layer 973. I'll go close to that. Um, so 1207, this is from seven minutes ago. And you can see all of the, um, this is actually after recoat. You can see the raised edges, which are uh, the contours being slightly higher than the actual, um, the core of the part. 
and then the data that's generated. So blue is below the uh, nominal level, level of the powder bed, and then red would be above the nominal le level of the powder bed. Um, but this is a fairly boring build. So I think if it's okay with you, I'll switch to one that's a little bit more interesting that we did in the past. Um, so this is a build uh, that you may have seen us talking about in some of our press releases. This is a, uh, a combustor liner for a micro turbine from Sierra Turbines. Uh, this is a Hasteloy X print uh, where we're printing two of these in the build chamber. Um, and we can go down and, and one of the nice things about height mapper is that we're getting a peak height on every layer. Uh, and so we're plotting this uh, as it goes along throughout the entire build. Uh, and then you can dive into even more detail and look at individual layers. So if I go up here to height mapper, I can select, let's say layer 400 and it'll pull it from the server. It'll refresh that. Um, you can see here the lazed image. Um, so this is the actual uh, photo taken from our camera system built into the machine. Um, and this gives you kind of an idea of, of what you're printing. Uh, at that moment, and then you have the data that's interpret interpreted from that um, that scan. And so you can see <clears throat> red here is slightly protruding and blue is slightly below the powder bed. Uh, generally, if you see red, you'll see it on surfaces that are very overhanging and it tends to protrude a little bit through the through the powder bed. Um, and that's one of the nice things about the non-contact recoder that we have is that you can actually tolerate some amount of protrusion and continue the build. Um, so, while this may look alarming, this is actually something that, that is generally pretty common when you're building overhanging structures, um, whereas the blue tends to be uh, more in the core of the material where you're, you're solidifying uh, and just kind of reducing the volume as the powder turns into solid metal. Um, is the system watching for that and like responding to too much red? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, and so I think if I went back, let me see if I can do that. Um, so on this heat map, when we look at the peak height, it's going to load all the data for every layer. And what this is showing is the peak height for every every single layer. So you have a data point on every layer. Um, and the warning threshold is set here to be 400 microns. So that's saying if something protrudes more than 400 microns, that's a problem. Um, but you can see, you know, for this build in particular, we didn't we didn't get to that warning threshold, and every, everything seems to be relatively well behaved. So I think in addition, um, there's a way to show um, lots of layers together and draw conclusions from the, the combined set. Is that right? Yes, that is that is absolutely correct. So that's going back into, that's not uh, shown in Assure itself. Um, that's taking the data that is being collected and displayed in Assure and uh, looking at it in Flow, which is our print preparation software. You can actually load um, some of this, this uh, layer-wise data into Flow. This is a, uh, a video of a build that we did. It's also Hasteloy X, but this is a, a build where we were printing high-pressure turbine blades. Um, and these are all printed free-floating, so they're completely unattached from anything in the build plate. Um, which, Pete, I think you may be familiar with after unpacking one of our free-floating builds <laughs> in the past. Yeah. Um, so this we'll is, link this to is, that video in the show notes below. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> um, so this is this is a full build of the high-pressure turbine blades, and I'm just going to play it here uh, and talk over it. Um, so the parts are currently hidden, but we're going to be scrolling up through the layers so that you can see the actual geometry of the build. And this is the full geometry of the build. Um, and then one of the other things that we're displaying here that you see in, in this blue and yellow and red data is the actual height map data projected in three dimensions. Um, so blue is a minor uh, protrusion, yellow gets a little bit more uh, serious, and red is, is, uh, is above um, a 240 microns is what we have here in the legend. Um, one interesting thing, you can see those the leading edge or the bottom edge of the part is actually kind of a blue line, and that's because it's slightly protruding as you're building this free floating part. There's nothing to constrain it, um, and that's fine. That's uh, actually what you would expect from our system with the ability to print the free floating, um, but you are able to take all of this data through the entire um, the entire print and then project it back onto the, onto the CAD and onto the actual parts uh, so that you can see 
where these different behaviors are occurring. Um, and this can give you insight uh, in, into how you might change designs if that's something that you need to do. Um, you can do this on a build-to-build -build basis and have a comparison to make sure that things are behaving consistently. Um, and we can also apply this to the other data that we're collecting, which is around like the surface defects or the probability of porosity. Um, so it's a really powerful tool to get a lot more insight into, into how these builds are behaving. One of the goals that Velo has as a company is to make sure that uh, you're able to print apart without a lot of uh, development, right? We're really trying to simplify uh, a lot of the workflow up front so that you can get a part, whether it's a new product or an existing product, pull it into our software and be able to print it uh, with relative ease. Um, but I think there's still a lot to be learned from actually, uh, you know, people call it window time, right? If you're, if you're standing there staring into a machine, uh, day after day, you develop a lot of intuition around what is going on a process, what's good, what's bad. Um, and Assure is really another tool uh, that's kind of a, a alternative window time, I guess. You get to stare at your computer screen more, which I think is what we're all looking for these days. Um, and and it gives you kind of the same level of, of insight, actually a much more nuanced level of insight into the builds and how they're behaving. Um, and it can really help to make, uh, especially like AM engineers, better engineers because you just have much more data at your fingertips um, and you can um, kind of interpret that data in different ways uh, rather than just, you know, watching a build, watching the laser melt stuff and then getting parts out at the end of the build. Uh, there really is a lot more um, going on. Zach, thank you. <laughs> Absolutely, Pete. Thank you as well. Find related articles in the links below. And for more on how additive manufacturing is changing production, visit additivemanufacturing.media.